video is about testing dry pour concrete. Have you ever wondered did dry pour concrete really work? Have you ever wondered if it's a strong material and it's gonna be long lasting? Well, then this video is for you. I'm gonna teach you how to make the best dry pour concrete possible. I'm also gonna compare dry pour and typical concrete to one another. Ladies and gentlemen, a warning though, not everything is going to work out. My name is Tyler Lay. I am a concrete freak and I have done tons and tons of testing for lots and lots of people. I work in this concrete playground at Oklahoma State University, amazing, awesome Cooper Lab. I've worked for 35 different state DOTs, 20 different companies, five different federal agencies, all testing concrete to make sure that it's great. I'm a structural engineer. I am a materials engineer. I'm a professor and baby, I love me some concrete. But now this video, let's jump right in. What is dry pour concrete and what is it all about? Well, you set up some forms, then you dump in concrete mix. That's the mix, no, no water added, just the mix itself. Now you can put rebar into that if you want to. That is optional, not something that you have to do. Then you smooth it out. You use a roller to give a great texture to it. Then you start to mist the surface, let it set up a little bit. Then you soak the surface. I've talked about this on another video. You can see other videos about this online. Now, does this really work? I mean, that's the question. I, I wondered the same thing when I saw it. Well, what we did was we took a cylinder that was four inches in diameter and that is eight inches height and you can see that it's transparent. You can see inside of it so you can see what's going on. It's got a solid bottom on it as well. We're gonna fill that cylinder up with dry concrete. See, totally full all the way to the brim. And now we're gonna add water. So as you add water to the top, you can see it penetrate, penetrate, penetrate. Pretty cool, right? I mean, I was actually shocked at how fast it penetrated, how deep it penetrated, because I was thinking maybe eight inches, maybe it wouldn't go all the way down. You can see in this video, it does, it makes it all the way to the bottom, right? Had to stall a little bit for that to happen, but there he is. We made it, yay! So we can spin it around. It didn't just get in one spot. It went all the way around in the entire sample. Pretty cool, right? But how long did all that penetration take? Well, we actually measured it, used image analysis from the videos, and we can actually tell you right there on the y-axis is the penetration depth, and on the x-axis is the time, and it took about 95 minutes for it to go eight inches, and look, it's pretty linear. As, as in if, if you want it to go about four inches or so, it's gonna take about half that amount of time. So that's pretty cool that the water can penetrate into that dry concrete mix. But how does this work? What is this all about? Well, to make concrete, we take cement and water and we add them together to make paste. Paste is what glues everything together. It glues the rock, sand, and the rebar together that's inside of our concrete. So if we have some concrete we've cut up and looked like this, the paste is that stuff in between the rock and the sand particles that help hold everything together. So the better the paste, the better the um, concrete, then that's what we're shooting for. And dry pour uses no mixing, right? No mixing. So how does that non-mixing impact our paste? Well, let's get into that. And how does that impact ultimately our concrete? We're gonna look at two things. We're gonna look at how it causes or how it changes the strength of the concrete. Then we're gonna look at how it stops cracking that happens inside reinforced concrete. So let's talk about strength number one. So we're gonna start out with a local um, dry mix concrete batch, right? That's hmm. made in Oklahoma, cause that's where I'm at. We're gonna open it up. Look, there's rock, sand, cement inside there. And we're gonna fill up this cylinder every single Time. We use that same volume for every single thing. I'm a researcher, I'm gonna make sure these things are constant. And now we're gonna make some wet mix concrete. That's like typical concrete. So we're gonna fill that up. We're gonna dump it out. Remember, we're using the same volume every time. And then we're gonna dump it into a bowl. We're going to add water to it. We're gonna carefully measure out exactly how much water we added to it. Yep, there it is, adding water. We're gonna mix, right? Yep. 
Mix it up, mix it up, mix it up. Keep adding water, mix it up, mix it up. Keep adding water till it's workable, it's nice. It seems to be like something that we could make, like, you know, a slab with or something. So we measure the exact amount of water that we use to make that concrete. Now, when it comes to our dry pour samples, we're gonna have different flavors. One flavor is the same amount of water as the wet mix. So, okay, remember how much water we added? Yeah, we measured that, right? We're gonna add that exact same amount of water to our dry pour sample. Another one, we're gonna use that same amount of water, but then we're gonna mist it constantly for seven days. What? Mist it constantly for seven? How did we do that? Well, we are lucky at Oklahoma State, we have a fog room. Look at that. Ah! It like rains all the time. And the last sample there, um, we're going to saturate it. We're going to really actually make a dry pour sample and we're going to keep adding water, keep adding water, keep adding water till it can take no water. There it is. There it is on the top. See, we just keep adding, keep adding, keep adding, keep adding as it starts to penetrate. So at the top here, that has the, number one, has the least amount of water. It's the same amount of water as a wet mix. And the one at the bottom has the most amount of water. We added water, added water, added water, added water, till it wouldn't take any more. And a lot of people will tell you number three is not a good idea, but let's see what the data looks like. We're gonna test these cylinders that we made in compression. That's where we loaded them from the top and the bottom until they break. And we're gonna measure their seven day strengths. And then we have at least three samples that we've made for each one. Some of them we've made up to five. And here is our data. On the Y axis, we have our strength. And on the X axis, we have the type of mixes. On the far left here, we have the wet mix. That is the one that traditional concrete, mix it up, mix it up, mix it up. Right, and then we have our dry pour, and oh my gosh, oh my gosh, look how much lower the strength is, but it's important to know, the same amount of water is in each of these. One of them is with mixing, and one of them is with not. So this mixing, it's a big deal. Now we're gonna bring in the next mixture. This is the dry pour, but we misted it constantly for seven days in our crazy rain room, right? Not everyone's got a crazy rain room, but we went crazy and misted it constantly. And look at that, the strength got higher. Remember the last one? The one where we just kept adding water, kept adding water, kept adding water till it wouldn't take any more water. That is that dry pour plus saturated. And look, it was the strongest of all of them. And But it was still, 2.2 times less strong or lower strength than our wet mix, right? So uh, yeah, there's a big difference here. Dry pour is about 2.2 times weaker than wet mix at seven days. So this one on the far right there has the highest amount of water, and the one on the far left has the lowest amount of water. As you can see, water is a big deal when it comes to dry pour concrete. Dry pour is stronger with the more water you added, so when you are making it, when you missed it, you let the surface set up a little bit and then baby, you flood it. You just give it water and if this was a dry pour concrete slab, that's exactly what you want, right? Just water everywhere, just flooded water on top. So what did the tested concrete look like? So we can learn a lot by looking inside of things that are broken. So here's our wet pour, right? And look look inside there, we can see um, that the material is going to break at the point of weakness, right? So that's an insight to what's going on inside of our concrete. And the break went through the aggregates. That's a big deal, that's important. What does that mean? That means the paste, remember that, that's the cement plus the water, is stronger than the rock or about the same strength as the rock. And so when it broke, there wasn't a preferential break. But now let's look at our friend dry pour. Now look, 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 look. Do you see any aggregates? I don't see any aggregates. The aggregates are not anywhere on the break. Why does that happen? Well, this means that the paste is weaker than the rock. So when it broke, it broke around the rock, not through the rock. That's why the paste is so weak. And now just to prove it here, we have wet mix on the right, dry pour on the left. We hit the wet mix with a hammer. Boom! Man, the dry pour, it didn't, it didn't really make it, right? It just like, yeah, over, game over. 
So the paste in the wet mix is actually stronger than the dry pour. And how does the strength change over time? I know, you know, like we've always heard this, like concrete gets stronger and stronger over time. Well, let's measure it. Well, on the X axis, we have time down here. And on the Y axis, we have strength. The blue line there, that is the wet mix. And the orange line down there is the dry pour with the same amount of water as the wet mix. And look at that. Look at that. Dry pour does not gain strength. And the wet mix, it does, continues to gain strength. So this wet mix, it gains strength over time, like you'd expect with normal concrete, but that dry pour, it just doesn't, right? And doesn't happen. So let's talk about stopping cracks now. We talked about strength, but we wanna stop cracks because cracks, oh no, yuck. Cracks, we don't want cracks in our concrete. And that's why we put rebar inside of our concrete to help stop these cracks or arrest these cracks from happening. That's the rebar in orange and the crack there is there, you can see it. And so as that crack tries to open, that rebar is gonna try to hold that crack tight or small or together. And there's something called the split beam test. Now we developed it at Oklahoma State University. It's a pretty, pretty cool test. It looks like this. It is a concrete beam. It has a rebar in the middle and it's got these wedges at the top and bottom of the beam. And we've used a platen or a wedge to load it there. Let's zoom in on that right up there at the top because so, there's a key detail going on. So see those wedges, there's one on the left and on the right, they're actually two separate pieces, two separate pieces. So as you start to load, it opens, it forms a crack at a known spot. It's pretty cool. And we can crack the concrete and we can measure how much load does it take to create a crack of a certain size. Do that again and again and again. I'll make more videos about this in the future because it's a crazy, useful, awesome, simple test. Now on the x-axis here, I'm showing load, and on the y-axis, I am showing crack width. The blue line is wet mix, the orange line is dry mix, and the lower you are on this graph, the better. So for example, at about 3,000 pounds loading in this test, look at the differences in crack size. Huge. Dry pour cracked 10 times larger than wet mix. This is not comparable, not so good. So if we have to say like, what's going on? There is the rebar there that is inside. And if we dissect it, if we cut it up and look inside to see what's going on, if I've got my wet mix, there is the casting that the rebar made into the concrete. Do you see that? See those indents, see those imprints, the rebar imprints there? That's good. That means it's bonding really, really well. Let's look at, see what happens with dry pour. Well, it's over here on the right. Ooh, no casting. No rebar imprint. It's not bonding as well to that bar, right? So that's why it's not performing as well. So the dry pour just does not pack around the rebar as tightly as the wet mix does. That's why it, that imprint doesn't happen. And this makes your cracks between five to 10 times larger in dry pour compared to wet mix concrete. Ugh, not so good. So why is there such a big difference in strength and cracking? Like why, what is that all about? Well, let's go inside and let's look at wet mix first. Now, when we're making our wet mix and we zoom in really tight. Enhance 34 to 46. Here, and, we, and these, these little particles here, that are actually cement grains, okay? And that is air inside of that box. This is like a unit inside of it. Like, you know, we're make-believing here, looking inside of it, right? And then as we start to add water to it, right? And as we start to mix it up, that those cement grains are going to be surrounded by water, at least largely surrounded by water. See, there's the water there in blue. And as they go to hydrate or react, look at all that stuff growing together. That paste, that's the good stuff, it makes that concrete strong. There's lots of bonds there. It's gonna hold on to rocks and sand and rebar and itself, it's gonna be great. Now let's talk about our friend dry pour. Well, if we take that dry pour cylinder, and again, we take an area that we're gonna zoom in on, right? Now we're gonna have our same cement grains, we're gonna have our same air, all right? And as we start to add water from the top, and that water starts to penetrate, showed you that video earlier, the water is gonna come in, the air is going to go out, and the water is gonna go in certain regions, and the air has to escape, right? It has to have a place that comes out, and we actually see this stuff blowing bubbles, okay? And this creates an air channel 
inside of the concrete. Yeah, an air channel, right? And when the hydration products start to form, well, they're only gonna grow where there's water. They're not gonna be able to grow where there's air. So there's not gonna be as many bonds. It's not gonna be as strong. And that channel is gonna create a weak plane in our concrete. This is like casting cracks into the concrete itself. And these cracks are why dry pour has lower strength. You want more evidence? Here's water being added to a dry pour sample. You can see the water penetrating and the air is coming to the top. See those bubbles? That's the air coming out of the dry pour sample. Now, this is after we've taken the dry pour sample out of the mold. See those channels on the side? Those are those air channels. Those are those cracks that are formed not only on the outside, but on the inside of the dry pour sample. But the more water that's added to dry pour, the smaller the cracks are going to be, right? We saw that the strength was better, right? All kinds of things were better as we added more water. Why is that? Well, as you add more and more water, these channels are gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. More water equals smaller channels. And then when well, they're gonna start to grow, they're gonna get more hydration products because you have more water in there. And those weak planes, those channels are going to be smaller, right? So that's a good thing all around, more hydration products, smaller channels. What does this mean? Not mixing dry pour concrete significantly impacts the strength and the cracking that happens to that concrete. And I would not use dry pour concrete for most projects that I would be involved with, okay? And why? Because for the same cost, you're paying the same amount of money for the concrete, for the raw materials, but you're getting such an inferior product. When would I use dry pour concrete? Well, if I was doing a DIY project and it had very low loads on it and I needed a nice surface and I didn't have a way to mix it, then I would consider using dry pour concrete. Something like a little step outside your door, perhaps something to put your air conditioning units on, or maybe your trash cans or something else like that's out there. So what did we just learn? Well, dry pour requires less labor because you don't mix it, okay? But, 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 dry pour is 2.2 times weaker than wet mix at seven days. Dry pour does not gain strength over time and dry pour does not form a strong bond to the rebar. And the cracks are about five to 10 times larger in dry pour concrete compared to wet mix concrete. And this decreased performance is likely caused by those air channels that I talked about before forming. So, hey, if you wanna help me out, if you want to support me, the number one thing you can do is to watch my videos. The number two thing you can do is to share my videos with other people out there that you know that you think will watch them. And of course, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. What did you think about all this? Are you buying into dry pour or are you kind of worried about it now after you've heard my talk about it? And of course, check me out on Instagram and Facebook at concrete.tyler and check my website out at concretefreaks.com. And a big, big, massive thank to the freaks that helped make this happen. These are the students that were in my concrete durability class that helped make this. a. This is one of their projects that they worked on. Here is their names and their lists. And so make sure you give them props. Make sure you give them high fives. Give them some love if you see them out and about. They did an amazing job. And also, these folks helped make this project happen. They supported them, helped build things, helped do things. So a massive, massive, massive thanks to them as well. Take care, everybody. Bye.